criticisms uh, against seed oils uh, specifically? Like I, I've seen you speak about grape seed oil, which is a really fascinating one because it really wasn't something that was in the human diet until, you, as you were saying, that winemakers realized, hey, like we could, we're leaving money on the table. Yeah. Well, it's grape seed. <laughs> Turn this shit into oil. Yeah. So again, some industrious uh, entrepreneur saw that as a byproduct of winemaking, you're losing out on all these grape seeds, right? And grape seeds are rich in oil, like like all seeds are, right? And so if you can extract the oil and get rid of the noxious like aromas and, and flavors, then you've got something that you can sell, right? For for I think it's like a five hundred or six hundred million dollar a year business, if not more, these days. Um, so grapeseed oil, like any of these grain and seed oils, like corn oil, uh, canola oil, which comes from the rapeseed plant, soybean oil, they're referred to sometimes within the food industry as RBD oils, refined, bleached, and deodorized oil. Ugh. Yeah. Um, because they they have like these, like again, these harsh, bitter flavors, right? Mm -hmm. Some of them, like, uh, like the rapeseed, contain toxins like erucic acid. They might want to change the name of that seed. Yeah, right? Doesn't it seem like a rude way? <laughs> yeah. You know, you want to murder fruit? No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, why is it rapeseed? Exactly. Okay, so um, what it, what's the negative effect of things like, like, I would imagine that in the human diet, consuming uh, an exor exorbitant amount of, this kind of grape seed oil, it's really not even possible. Like, the, how many grapes would you have to eat to get with the seeds to get the kind of uh, the amount that you would get from a tablespoon of like grape seed oil? Yeah, I mean, humans, we don't even like generally, we would, we, we're averse to seeds for a reason. I mean, if you've ever tried to chew into a grape seed, it's bitter, right? You spit it yeah. out. So that's why these oils didn't, they didn't exist in the human food supply before 100 years ago. We hadn't had the chemistry labs, the erector sets required to extract these oils and then run them through all these myriad processes to, to make them to some degree palatable and, and, and able to be utilized by the food industry. They used to be used as engine you know, lubricant yeah. and things like that. that that's in industrialized uh, seed oils have always been used as lubricants for engines. Yeah. So when did they start using them? What is this, Jamie? What would you pull up there? Okay, to produce 237 milliliters, eight ounce fluid bottle of grape seed oil, one ton of grapes is required. So 2,000 pounds of grapes to get eight ounces of grape seed oil. The finished oil is light yellowish green in color. Holy shit. That's insane. Well, that, there you go. So yeah. if you're cooking in grape seed oil, you're, you're essentially, it's a crime against nature. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's just yeah, it's the most unnatural thing, and uh, you know, uh, people listening to this might might say, oh, you know, appeal to nature fallacy. What's natural isn't always like arsenic right, is true, natural. but I think that 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 like a platitude like that isn't very helpful, right, in the modern world. So, where... what are the negative effects of things like industrialized seed oils? Yeah, so um, I mean, for one, they all undergo that step called the deodorization step, which is the step that removes the noxious odors and aromas from these oils, makes them palatable, gives the oil, it's basically the food industry's equivalent of the witness protection program, right? Because it takes an oil and it makes it so bland and, and free of any kind of character, right? That it can be used to roast nuts in, it could be used to make granola bars, it can be used to saute food in in a restaurant, it could be used to fry food in, for example. And the problem is, one, one of the problems with these seed oils is that that deodorization step creates a small but significant amount of trans fats. And we know that there's no safe level of trans fat, artificially, you know, man-made trans fat consumption. Their most uh, recognizable form was in uh, poly, uh, partially hydrogenated vegetable oils, which were outlawed, right, five, six years ago, something like that. Um, but you can still find man-made trans fats on the market in the form of these grain and seed oils. Now, the dose likely makes the poison, as it does with most things, but your average um, American today is over-consuming these oils. Well, I mean, they didn't exist, again, in the few human food supply prior to a century ago, and their use has increased anywhere between uh, 250 and 1,000 percent, 1,000 percent for soybean oil, in particular polyunsaturated fats. We know that your average American is under-consuming vitamin E, like 10% of, uh, of Americans consume adequate vitamin E. So as our 
uh, intake of these polyunsaturated grain and seed oils increases. Our need for vitamin C increases. We're not consuming adequate vitamin E. You mean e. vitamin E? Vitamin E, yeah. Yeah, you said C. Um, sorry, vitamin E. And so we're, we're under-consuming vitamin E. Um, that's going to have consequences, right? Because vitamin E, literally, its role in the body um, is to pr protect lipids, right, from oxidation. So this is a great interview uh, to cut this short because it's going to keep on going. But an important thing here, so we've established it, all these grape seeds, soy, oil, all these oils are actually very toxic because they create trans fat. Right, artificial trans fat. This is what they're using at all these fast food restaurants when you go buy fried food, and it's just so prevalent. And what's crazy is that people actually think grape seed oil, they see it as healthy. I did before seeing this. I'll tell you something scary though, right? I uh, used to make a lot of pancakes, I still do. I like to make oatmeal pancakes, and um, you know, I was using the spray, non stick spray. The problem with the nonstick spray is I like to cook at a very high heat. So that way I'm working the pancakes really fast. Flip and flip and flip. Pa -pa -pam, boom. But anyway, um, so the nonstick spray will burn. That oil, whatever they use, it burns. It turns uh, black and it kind of taints the taste and the color of the pancake. So I told my wife, I'm like, listen, next time, if you can find it, maybe look for like a coconut or olive oil spray oil because those have a very high temp burn so it's not going to burn on a pan while making um, pancakes. Well, anyway, so she brought a virgin olive oil spray, 100% virgin olive oil spray. I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. Anyway, so I go to use it, and guess what? It burns immediately, faster than the other one. Burns like crazy. I even tried it one time on a piece of fish, and I put it in an air fryer. Well, guess what? It came out all burned just in a few minutes. They can't stand the heat. I was like, well, this is crazy. I tried it multiple times. The oil burns right away. What does this mean? It means that it's not olive oil. It's not 100% olive oil. That means that the label is lying. And I think I saw a show about this, and it was saying how many, you know, that are marked as olive oil are actually a combination of other oils. There's no really safeguarding. There's no agency or, or third party that's verifying the quality of these oils. And when you hear that now all these oils are actually toxic, it alarms you even more that even when you think you're getting the right thing, you might not be. What's funny is also the extra virgin olive oil spray. It smells like olive oil like crazy, like more than olive oil that costs, you know, I have some bottles that I buy $20. They don't have a strong olive oil smell. Not like this spray. You spray the spray, it's like, whoa, this smells so strong. I get it. It's aerosol a little bit. But I think that they're putting either flavor, smells of olive oil in there, or they're mixing it to make it really seem like olive oil, but then it's diluted with other stuff, and that's the stuff that's burning. Anyway, some food for thought for you guys, you know. I'm definitely going to be more particular about, you know, my oil use, you know, because it's not something that I think about, and that's one of the reasons why fried food is so bad. When I got the air fryer, but, you know, then I go spray some oil on the, on the food before I put it in the air fryer sometimes, which is horrible. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. As always... Buy red, sell green, and watch your grapeseed oil.